Okay, now we're going to have a look at how we bring transform data into Final Cut Pro 7 and below. So we have our shot in Mocha, and this is the one we tracked before. And I'm just going to go to export out tracking data. And here we have our huge list of which different type of uh, or types of transform data or tracking data we want to take out. And I'm going to take out Final Cut Basic Motion. And I'm going to just save this out as an XML file. And we'll pop into our Final Cut Pro project here. And I'm just going to come into Import XML File. And it's going to show us up. We can navigate and find the XML file that we just took out of uh, Mocha. And hit OK. And it's going to choose which project we're going to bring it into. I'm going to bring it into my transform data project and with the sequence settings we can choose which sequence setting we're going to bring it into or just set that to auto and let it uh, take it from the XML file and we can reconnect it to the media files as well and here it comes with an extraordinarily long name so basically it takes the name of and the first thing I'm going to do is actually rename this uh, yeah so it takes takes the name as the type of uh, data that Mocha's taken out and then it takes the whole of the uh, of the destination to uh, to where it found the XML file so it it can be a very long name so here it's a Mocha basic motion here uh, it could be Mocha, uh, Mocha corner pin cool now if I just drag that into here into my sequence and change the sequence settings so they match and let's have a quick look at what's going on. We play that back. Well, it's not quite what we're after. You can see it's doing something. And that's actually quite interesting what it's doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that down there actually and come in and uh, bring in my original footage here. And I'll create a little piece of text. We'll call that sample text to bring it over the top. Now, if I double click on my clip that I brought in from Mocha and come into the motion here, we can actually see that it's got keyframes for scale, rotation, and center, which is the position. So what I want to do is I want to take that data and copy it actually to our text layer, the, the layer that I want to match move. And that's very, very straightforward. I'm just going to come in, right click on my XML file, the one I took from Mocha, hit copy. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to paste attributes. So right click on the, on the clip that I want to match move or put the match move on and go paste attributes. And we can just put on the basic motion. I want to turn off scale attribute times because if our clip in this case, our text clip is longer than the data that I've taken out. So what's going to happen is, well, let's uh, actually, we'll leave it off to begin with and I'll show you what happens in a moment. And it's brought that in quite happily. So let's just duplicate these across over here and we will remove the attributes on this one. So it's just sample text again. Now what I'm going to do is do the same thing copy paste attributes one more time with basic motion and this time we're going to set scale attribute times and leave that on and let's see what happens here it doesn't quite work and the reason it doesn't work is because our clip on the timeline is longer than the um, the clip that we had there so instead of each of these keyframes being exactly one frame long it's trying to stretch them out and compensate for it. So some, some of the distances between the keyframes are two frames long, some are one frame long, and we get this sort of weird, staggered kind of approach that doesn't look very nice. And is in fact entirely wrong. So let's come in here. Now if we want to move this up and down, we still do have in the motion tab here, we still have the anchor point that we can change around, but you know, that's really not doing 
all that much for us. All that's doing here is that it is just changing the, the center about where the, um, where the rotation happens. So that's not going to help us out. And what if we only wanted to take the, um, the position data? We didn't want the rotation or scale data at all. You know, how can, we, how can we do that? You know, there is no way of selecting multiple keyframes in Final Cut Pro. I should say Final Cut Pro 7. Um, so we'd be forced to come in and delete all the, uh, the keyframes here or alternatively go into the XML file and delete them there. Uh, that's not a great sort of workflow. So if I'm bringing in Mocha data and I need to get this into uh, Final Cut, uh, I actually go through a slightly different process. What we're gonna do is we're gonna export the data out of Mocha now and take it into Apple Motion. So I'm gonna export out my tracking data as we've done before. I'm gonna come up and find my Motion Basic Transform. I'm going to save this out as a motion project. So transform data here as a motion motion project, and let's pop into motion. And we're going to open that project up. Now it saves it as an early version of a mo uh, of a motion project, so that uh, it maintains compatibility between the. Um, the other version. So you can pretty much open it up in, in whatever version of mo uh, motion you want to. Uh, and we can either open it up as untitled and save a new version, or if we're just, you know, most of the time we're just going to be uh, using this as our master file anyway. So we're not going to work in an, an older version of motion anyway. So um, just open up the original. Let's uh, take our project duration down a little bit. Let's fit this into the viewer. So it's brought in our base clip, our surface clip, and put those into our group. So let's come in and let's, uh, well, let's do the old favorite. Matter of fact, let's turn off visibility on the, on the surface there. And we'll call this one test. Let's one nice and big again. Cool. And now we need to link the test to the surface here. And that's really easy to do. Let's come into our library, come to my behaviors, into motion tracking, and we'll just go to match move and drag that over the top of our test here. And we've got our uh, heads up display pop up here. If we don't, if you can't see that, hit F7, that'll bring that up there. And all we have to do now is drag our surface over into the well there as the source. And now if we press play, you can see we've got a good match move going on, fitting perfectly our data from motion, from Mochrami. And we can move that around. That's the cool thing about, um, about motion is that we can move these around even while the, uh, the thing's playing. If I want to have, um, at the moment it's just doing the position, we can have it scaling and rotating as well. So we've got a small amount of rotation going on here. I'll come into my inspector, come to my properties. Let's just move that up even while it's playing. Cool. And that's that's match moved that in really nicely. Now here's the the project that I took from Mocha and opened up in Motion version four. Uh, and the reason I'm doing it in version four now is I want to show you something um, kind of cool. So I've saved this out as transform data dash motion, and let's pop into Final Cut. And here we are back in Final Cut, and I can import my motion file directly into Final Cut Pro 7 or Final Cut Pro 6. And here I have my motion file playing back through there quite nicely. And we've got two advantages of doing it this way, of um, like completely bypassing uh, Final Cut. 
Uh, the first is actually if we want to make any sort of small changes, I can just uh, open this in the editor. Now it'll pop back in here. So if I just make a quick change here, just bring the text down just a little bit, save that out, come back into Final Cut, and that automatically will update down there and I can just replace, let's fit this back to the window. Yeah, I can replace the other one here. Got another thing that's going on that's, uh, that's a distinct advantage. Let's see if I can find my... And just take a quick look at the quality of the aliasing here on the edges. Now, whenever there's an, a rotation on any clip, actually, um, in, the, in the motion tab in Final Cut, I know it's confusing, confuses everyone. The motion tab in Final Cut is where we do all of our transformations, as opposed to the motion application where we do all the fun, fancy stuff. But yeah, so if we're working in the motion tab here, the uh, putting any sort of uh, rotation on will automatically make that look um, absolutely terrible. And there's nothing you can do about it. Final Cut Pro 7 and below, all drop down to draft quality uh, with no anti-aliasing at all. On the other hand, if we uh, come in with our motion project, we can see that the corners here or the edges here are absolutely fine. We are getting some sawtoothing for the aliasing, for the um, interlacing. The project properties here, the field order has to be set to none. Then we have a look over here now. See if I can find it. That should now look lovely, yeah, there. Yeah, so there's no interlacing going on there, perfect. But you can just see the quality of the uh, of the rotation there is absolutely lovely and has got a, lo a great anti-aliasing as opposed to the draft quality here. Cool, that's just a uh, quick overview of how to use transform data in Apple Motion and Apple Final Cut Pro.